Well, evidently it's been a quite a day for uh, laws. Uh, you know, I, I see now in theory they passed this bipartisan gun control. Well, I'm, I'm always a little iffy on, you know, it, when they start saying bipartisan, you know that isn't really very accurate. And the thing about this that concerns me the most is when they start talking about uh, red light, red flag laws. I, I just know it, it isn't a question of if this will be abused, it's just how much, to what extent it will be abused, because they will abuse it. Uh, it worries me. You know, everybody with an ex-wife is going to have to really be careful. You know, it, it, there's a potential for a lot of nightmares with this. Uh, I'm, I'm not pleased about that. Yeah, there has to be a, a point in there, you know, where somebody isn't capable of, of being trusted with a gun. But I don't want the people who are totally anti-gun to be in control of making them decisions. And now with our legal system, our, our court system is so corrupt and so mismanaged, I could just see there, there's so much instance where this could be abused. You know, it'd be different if you could actually trust the court system, but you can't. So, you know, some places it probably won't be a problem, but there are places where this is going to really be a problem, especially when you start dealing with, like, ex-wives. I mean, uh, I can see that the first thing in a divorce court and they're going to go for somebody's guns. See, they're a threat. You know, I remember years ago, gosh, it's got to be like 10 years ago, there was a guy <coughs> that was doing videos on YouTube. And he had a collection of guns. And he was an older, crippled up, decrepit sort of guy. Uh, you know, he was no threat to anybody, but he talked a little bit too radically on YouTube. And then all of a sudden they did. They, they took his guns. Now, I mean, that was a big deal to him to own them guns and to have them swoop in and take all of his guns away. Though, in honesty, you know, he's watching him, you know, he was just running off at the mouth, he wasn't going to go out and be shooting cops and all, you know, he was, he was no threat to anybody really. But I think that pretty near killed him. You know, I know it killed his channel. <laughs> but, I know you're going to have to be aware of things that you put on social media because they always will use that against you. You know, it's the first place they look now. I mean, even if you're crossing the border from Canada into the U.S., they want to be able to look at your social media. See what you said. You know, that's not a good thing. Because really, if somebody is in, intending to do great harm, the last thing you're going to do is put that on social media. Usually the ones making the most noise are, are no threat. But they could easily be accused of being a threat. And in that case, I'm afraid the court would, would crack down on them. I, I, just, I can see that happening. I think actually the likelihood is that this will cause more harm than good. I mean, this red flag thing could be handled 
in a better way. Uh, like if you if you're doing that, you know, a, a strong hand on that. I'm afraid what's going to happen is it'll have the opposite reaction to what you expect. You think you're going to disarm this guy, but uh, you're going to piss somebody off who maybe wasn't a threat before, but now will become a threat. And it isn't like you're taking away his guns is going to keep him from getting another gun. Big criminals get guns all the time. This is not a big thing. So I think you're going to have to tread real lightly with that. But the problem is, I know they won't tread lightly. You know, they're gonna... They're gonna run with it. And like I say, I think it'll backfire on them. But man, I, you know, if you could trust our judicial system, but you can't trust them to make a decision like that, whether someone is competent to have a firearm or not, I don't see it. I mean, I've known a lot of people who are barely competent, but yet I, I, I felt no threat from them having a firearm. But there's probably some neighbor there that is terrified that they have a firearm. You know, so this could really go very badly. Well, and then there were Supreme Court cases. But I guess the Roe versus Wade one, uh, I mean, I have opinions on that. I could go into that, but there's really no point about it. Um, it's unfortunate that there's going to be a lot of squawking. I mean, there's going to be some real crazy radicals making a whole lot of noise. I mean, I did see even that that pool president had to get on or whoever's running him. I wrote him a little speech and, and I'm listening to that and I'm thinking, oh yeah. Uh, you know, he's, he's saying that they shouldn't get violent, but at the same time he's inciting them to be violent. So, yeah. And it, it's a crazy radical bunch. I mean, if you've seen these protesters, what they're doing, you know, you would think that uh, if you were on the same side as them and, and you see what they're doing and what they're saying, because there's some really weird nut lunatics, uh, you think you would kind of rethink this. I'll maybe go into that someday. We'll see how these crazy act, but I know they're going to go nuts. But. Uh, Evidently, you know, Biden thinks that, oh boy, he's a gut. This is the vote getter for the midterms. This is really going to do her. So, but someday you're going to look back, you know, history is going to look back and, and think just what kind of savages people were. Uh, you know, uh, but. I'll probably go into that sometimes. There's a lot to go into there. But uh, they made the right decision. Put it back to the states because that's, it should always it should always go back to the states. That's where the authority starts is with the state. So yeah, that's good. But for some reason, the Democrats they feel that everything should be federal. You know, and that isn't how it was designed to be. I don't want to be forced to uh, do something that these lunatics in California or New York do. I want nothing to do with them. Um, and normal people are perfectly willing to let them be, you know, and do what they want. But they don't want to let you be. You know, they want to, they want to control you. Well, okay, any other Supreme Court thing was the uh, concealed carry. 
And then again, you know, like the, basically they were saying, it's really not, there's not a question there. You know, that's, it, it's not, you know, the thing was never in doubt, it should never have been in doubt that New York would to make some law, you know, that's, but if they do try, but yeah, that was two good Supreme Court decisions, you know, that's a start, but you know, you know, now they're, I mean, all because all they have to do is go by the Constitution. That's all they have to do. They're not supposed to legislate from the bench. They're supposed to just, is this constitutional or not? So they done good, but the liberals want them to be legislating. So I'm sure you'll start hearing them wanting to pack the court again. You know, they will just bring that up. But we'll see how it shakes down. But there was two good things, you know. That's a start. Like I say, this, this other uh, gun control thing, I really have great reservations about that. You know, I don't think it's going to make a damn bit of difference. As far as like these mass shootings and stuff go, I don't, I don't see that making a damn bit of difference. But they want to show that they're trying to do something. When I say this is really a gun control issue, it's it's a mental health issue. You have driven <laughs> the population; half of them are crazy. An interesting thing too, you know, like the other day then I see uh, Biden is is warning about the coming pandemic, you know, I mean, because that's, you know, that's their bread and butter is a good pandemic. So they're already pushing that. So maybe they want to go back to the right end voting and, you know, so they can play with it again. But at the same time, I have been seeing ads on, I think it was on YouTube, I saw a couple different times. Couldn't have been on television, I never watched television, so it had to be someplace else. But the two, uh, to do with the vaccinations, saying, oh, it's not too late, you know, to come to your senses and get vaccinated. <laughs> At the same time they're saying this, uh, more and more horror stories about people having strokes and you know, and this is all going back to the vaccine stuff. I mean, it's just an endless, you know, I mean, you hear it just in casual, regular news, you know, so-and-so, you know, like 25 years old, uh, has a heart attack. Well, that's a little surprising, you know. But you know, like I say, even in my personal life, I know people who, who never had health problems and, and buckle down to the pressure to get vaccinated and then started developing health problems. You know, that's, that's hard to get around that. There is a connection there. And I'm sure this will come out more and more, but the idea uh, that they're, they're still <laughs> trying to get people to get vaccinated just amazes me. You know, and the idea that they're trying to get young kids vaccinated, Ooh. and there's so much coming out about this. Uh, partly because, I mean, it's getting hard for them to deny it, so they aren't quite as strict about clamping down on what you say. But they may well start again. <laughs> 